So part two of sweating hides in preparation for brain tanning or for bark tanning potentially. So this hide has been sealed in a bag, sweating for about five days now. It hasn't been super warm temperatures, so I felt like I could go a little longer. If it was really warm, 70s, 80s, then I would wanna be probably getting on this within three, four days, as opposed to five or six, which is what I'm doing now. But check it out. This is what I've been looking for. A nice tug on the hair is going to slip it. It's not slipping super easy, which is great because it means it's not so funky that it's gonna be really gnarly to flesh it. And also I'm thinking that I wanna push the hair off of this and save this hide for a grain on bark tan rather than a buckskin because it's a big thick trophy buck and that's gonna be a thicker buckskin that I tend to like to use, but perfect for a nice durable grain on bark tan. All right, so you are definitely going to want an apron to do any hide work, particularly working on a waist beam where what's actually holding the hide on the beam is my belly. So vinyl apron, really nice to have. So this is a hide that was pulled off using, using a winch. So it's really, really clean and it only has the twitch muscles, which is the little muscle under the skin that makes their skin go like this when flies land on them and such. So that's an awesome sign that it's not gonna have any score marks and it's a really nice hide. So I'm gonna go ahead and flesh it before I push the hair because I want the cushioning of that hair still on the grain side of the hide so that I don't do any damage to the grain while I'm fleshing this. So the best way to flesh a hide is to peel it all off in one go rather than going here and there and all over the place. And ideally lining it up so that it's neck up and tail down at the bottom of the beam. So I'm going with gravity and I'm just peeling it all down kind of in line with the grain of the muscles. And you do need to clean your blade pretty often. This is a really dull blade totally dull so I couldn't cut myself with it. You don't want to cut your hide but when you're fleshing it does get gummed up with fat pretty fast and that will make it a little bit harder so I just wipe my hands across and wipe the fat off somewhere besides the blade as I go. But it doesn't take very much pressure. It's really easy just peeling it off and I don't have to be super careful to get every last little bit. I'm just trying to get it to a nice smooth surface that, so that when I go to push the hair, there's nothing caught up underneath there. No little bumps, nothing that might make me accidentally catch a little piece of the hide and push some of that grain that I'm trying to preserve off. All right, so I've got the whole thing nicely fleshed, good and clean. This is actually not flesh. It's just where the blood has soaked in to the hide, but you can see it's looking really nice and clean and check out how thick this neck is super thick. So that's why I'm saving this one for bark tan. So next step, get the hair off. Thanks everyone. If you like what I do, I encourage you to sign up for my mailing list so you can hear more about who I am, what I do and my various offerings. Also, I really rely on the support of my Patreon members to help me make these videos and pay all of the various fees for keeping this channel afloat and putting all of my online courses and other creative projects out into the world. So if you'd like to be a little bit more involved what I do, get a little bit more intimate with the smaller group of my major supporters and have more access to special benefits, I would really encourage you to join my Patreon team. It helps me out tremendously.